Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about the bones of the vertebral column. In this video, we'll be learning about the sacrum, also called the vertebra magnum. The sacrum is a large, flattened, triangular bone formed by the fusion of five sacral vertebrae. It forms the posterior superior part of the bony pelvis. On either side, it articulates with the corresponding hip bone at the sacroiliac joint. The upper part of the sacrum is massive because it supports the body weight and transmits it to the hip bones. The lower part is free from weight and hence tapers rapidly. You can see that in this specimen, the coccyx bone is attached, fused with the sacrum bone. Being triangular, the sacrum has a base, an apex and four surfaces. The dorsal surface, the pelvic surface, two lateral surfaces, that is the right lateral and the left lateral. The pelvic surface is smooth and concave, while the dorsal surface is irregular and convex. The lateral surface is irregular and partly articular. The sacrum is divided by the rows of foramina into a median part that is traversed by the sacral canal right here and pair of lateral masses right here formed by the fusion of the transverse process posteriorly and the coastal elements anteriorly. These are the lateral masses. Now let's look at the features of the sacrum in detail. Firstly, let's look at the features of the base. The base is directed upwards and forwards as you can see. It's directed upwards and forwards. It is formed by the upper surface of the first sacral vertebra and presents the features of a typical vertebra in a modified form. The body is lumbar in type. It articulates with the fifth lumbar vertebrae at the lumbosacral joint. This is the lumbosacral joint. There is presence of intervertebral disc in between. The projecting anterior margin is called the sacral promontory. The surface slopes forwards at an angle of 30 degree. The vertebral foramen lies behind the body and leads into the sacral canal. It is triangular in shape. In this artificial specimen of the sacrum, the sacral canal is not to be seen. This is the original specimen of a sacrum and what you see here is the sacral canal. The pedicles are short and directed backwards and laterally that is away from the center right here. The laminae are oblique. This is the laminae and the spine forms the first spinous tubercle as you can see. The superior articular processes project upwards. The facets on them are directed backwards and medially that is towards the center. The transverse process is highly modified. Each process is massive and fused with the corresponding coastal element to form the upper part of the lateral mass of the sacrum. The base of the lateral mass forms a broad sloping surface spreading fanwise as you can see right here from the side of the body. It is called the ala of sacrum. This is the ala of sacrum. The ala is subdivided into a smooth medial part and a rough lateral part. The apex of the sacrum is formed by the inferior surface of the body of the fifth sacral vertebra. It bears an oval facet for articulation with the coccyx. Now let's look at the features of the pelvic surface of the sacrum. The pelvic surface is concave and directed downwards and forwards. The median area is marked by four transverse ridges which indicate the lines of fusion of the bodies of the five sacral vertebrae. These ridges end on either sides at the four pelvic sacral foramina. These are the pelvic sacral foramina, which communicate with the sacral canal through the intervertebral foramina. Now let's look at the features of the dorsal surface of the sacrum. The dorsal surface is rough, irregular and convex. It is directed backwards and upwards. In the median plane, it is marked by the median sacral crest, which bears three to four spinous tubercles. 
below the fourth tubercle, there is an inverted U-shaped gap in the posterior wall of the sacral canal, right here. This is called the sacral hiatus. It results from the failure of the laminae of the fifth sacral vertebra to meet posteriorly. This is the sacral hiatus. Lateral to the median crest, the posterior surface is formed by the fused laminae. Lateral to the laminae and in line with the superior articular process of the first sacral vertebra, there are four articular tubercles representing the fused articular processes of adjacent vertebrae. The inferior articular process of the fifth sacral vertebrae are free and form the sacral cornua. This is the sacral cornua, which project downwards at the side of the sacral hiatus. This U-shaped is the sacral hiatus and this is the sacral cornua. Lateral to the articular tubercles, there are four dorsal sacral foramina as you can see right here. Now let us look at the features of the lateral surface. It is formed by the fused transverse process and the coastal elements of the sacral vertebrae. It is wide above as you can see it is wide right here and narrow below. The upper wide part bears an L shaped articular surface anteriorly and a rough deep pitted area posteriorly. The articular surface is formed by the coastal elements. It articulates with the auricular surface of the hip bone at the sacroiliac joint. The posterior roughened and pitted area is formed by the transverse process. Now let us look at the features of the sacral canal. The sacral canal is formed by the sacral vertebral foramina. It is triangular on cross section. Inferiorly, the canal opens at the sacral hiatus as you can see right here. The sacral canal communicates laterally with the dorsal sacral foramina and the pelvic sacral foramina through the intervertebral foramina. The sacral canal contains the spinal meninges. The phylum terminal and the subdural and subarachnoid spaces end at the level of the second sacral vertebrae right here. Now let us look at the attachments on the sacrum. The anterior and posterior edges of the body right here and right here of the first sacral vertebra give attachment to the lowest fibers of the anterior and the posterior longitudinal ligaments. The lamina of this first sacral vertebra gives attachment to the lowest pair of the ligamentum flava. This is the anterior longitudinal ligament. This is the posterior longitudinal ligament. The rough part of the ala gives origin to the iliacus anteriorly and attachment to the lumbosacral ligament posteriorly. The upper part of the ventral sacroiliac ligament is attached to its margin. This is the iliacus muscle, the part of the pelvic surface lateral to the bodies of the middle three sacral vertebra gives origin to the piriformis that is right here. This is where the piriformis takes origin. The area extends into the intervals between the pelvic sacral foramina right here and is E-shaped just as I showed you, E-shaped. This is the piriformis muscle. The dorsal surface gives origin to the erector spinae along a U-shaped line passing over the spinous process and the transverse tubercles right here. This is where the erector spinae takes origin. This is a transverse section of the abdomen and the muscle you see right here are the erector spinae muscles. The multifidus originates in the concavity of the U that is right here. This is the multifidus muscle. The interosseous sacroiliac ligament is attached to the rough pitted area of the lateral surface behind the auricular surface right here. The lower narrow part of the lateral surface below the auricular surface right here gives origin to the gluteus maximus, attachment to the sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments and origin to the coccygeus in order from behind to forwards. This is the gluteus maximus muscle. This is the coccygeus. The inferior lateral angle gives attachment to the lateral sacrococcygeal ligament. Now let us look at an easy way to remember the attachments on the sacrum. 
The mnemonic used here is, I love costly and good apple milkshake. Now please note that the red color symbolizes the origin of muscles and the green represents the attachments of the ligaments. I stands for the origin of iliacus. The L in love stands for the attachment of the lumbosacral ligament. The C in costly stands for the origin of coccygeus. G in good stands for the origin of gluteus maximus. Apple is further divided as A stands for the attachment of the anterior longitudinal ligament. P stands for the attachment of posterior longitudinal ligament. P stands for the origin of piriformis. L for the attachment of the ligamentum flavum. E for the origin of erector spinae. The M in milk stands for the origin of multifidus. The S in shake stands for the following ligaments. That is the sacroiliac ligament which includes the ventral sacroiliac ligament as well as the interosseous sacroiliac ligament, the sacrotuberous ligament, the sacrospinous ligament and finally the lateral sacrococcygeal ligament. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.